Okay, so today we're going to talk about a program called Inkscape. Inkscape is a vector illustration program that allows you to create images using shapes in such a way that they can be displayed at any size without any loss in quality. What I'm doing at the moment is resizing the document to fit the size of the image that we're going to create. We're going to create a DL size flyer, which is the size of uh, the third of an A4 sheet of paper divided along its longest edge. We're going to go to the layers palette, which you can get to by con pressing Control L. Uh, and we're going to make three layers, one for the background, one for the sunburst, and one for the foreground. You can navigate to the different layers using the uh, layer control down the very bottom of the screen. And the first step is to create a square using the rectangle tool. You just click and drag a box there to make that. Now we're going to color the box. We'll click on the uh, fill and stroke dialog button there. And we're going to make this... Um, we're going to color this with a, a linear gradient, which means that it sort of blends from one color to another. The first stop, we're going to make uh, an orange color. This is going to make it, uh, <clears throat> this is going to be the background for our sunset. The sort of thing that we're going to come up with is um, the sun setting over a green hill, and then we're going to have text boxes on top that uh, display some information. So our last stop, we make blue, and we add in a new stop in the middle, which we're going to make red. And this gives us a nice kind of uh, background gradient to work with for our sunset or sunrise or whatever it is. Okay, now we can use the uh, gradient control lo uh, lines to um, set the orientation of the gradient there. Next step is to create our hills. Now we're going to do that using the pen tool here. We'll just draw a little shape there with a notch in the middle. We're going to go into the edit paths tool and select that middle node. We're going to hit the symmetrical button. That allows us to um, <clears throat> adjust the shape of the curve. Uh, and there's two ways that we can adjust the shape using those handles that we've just created, or by actually clicking somewhere on the line and dragging it, and that will affect the nodes around that line. Okay, let's go back and uh, we'll color this shape again. Another linear gradient here. We're going to make our first stop a, uh, a dark green, and our second stop a light green. Uh, and we'll be able to have that in such a way that it looks like the light is sort of shining a little bit over the top of the hills. Okay. One thing that we're going to do for this one that we didn't do for the other one is we're going to give it a stroke, which is sort of an outline. Uh, we're going to make that the darker green again. And give it a bit of thickness as well. And we're also going to leave it a little bit transparent. Okay, thickness of three. Looks good. And one thing to keep in mind is that the box that's currently in the middle of this, the the um, the coloured area there is the border of the document. So when we when it comes time to save it or export it into another format, what's inside that box is all that we get. I'm going to lock the background layer so we can't click on it by accident, and we're going to move to the sunburst layer. The first step to create the sunburst is to uh, create a bit of a triangle here. It doesn't matter how accurate we are; we're going to readjust this. So we're going to grab our bottom two nodes there using the Edit Paths tool again and we're going to select the uh, Align Horizontally button and we'll select them all and we'll distribute them e uh, evenly horizontally which gives us a, a nice symmetrical triangle there. Okay, so we're going to move him over our coloured area but first we're going to adjust the rotation point. We're going to put it at the very top of our triangle there so that when it comes time to rotate it, it all rotates around the centre that's what's going to become our starburst. So we'll move it over the color here so that when we're working on it we can see a little bit easier what's going on. We're going to get rid of the stroke and we're going to do another linear gradient. Now our first stop we want to leave white, so in this case I won't touch it. And our last stop we're going to make yellow. We're going to hit the add stop button again, which is going to give us uh, something in between. No we're not. Yes we are. No we're not. Yes. Alright. Uh, and we'll make that, that stop a little bit whiter and another one, and we'll make that yellow so that it can, um, we'll have a, a portion in the middle where it's uh, a little bit of a, not a smooth gradient, it stays white. Uh, so let's move our gradient control around, get the shape we want to want it. Now these controls along the, the edge uh, represent the different stops that we just created, so we're going to move that uh, that whiteness up a little bit. And there we go, there's the first part of our starburst. We're going to scale it down so it's a reasonable size. We can hold down control and that will scale it uniformly so that shape won't actually change. 
it'll just uh, get smaller. Now we're going to go to the edit menu and select tiled clones from the clone sub menu. We're going to give it one row and ten columns. That means it's going to create ten copies of the uh, the triangle. We're going to shift it negative one hundred percent, and we're going to rotate by forty degrees per column and give it a little bit of randomization. When we hit the create button there, we can see that now we have our starburst shape. Now we're just going to resize a couple of these so it doesn't look too uniform. Might rotate this one here and rotate that one as well. Shrink him down a bit. Now if we hold Control and Shift when we shrink, he'll uh, he'll shrink evenly on both sides as opposed to scaling towards one corner. And a bit more shrinking. There we go. Now, if we select all of our objects here and go to the edit menu, uh, object menu, sorry, and click group, that allows us to treat it as one object now. So let's go back into the uh, fill and stroke dialog and we're going to give it a blur value of 1, which just sort of softens it up a little bit so they're not quite so harsh. If we did that with them separately, the computer would have to process the blur individually for each object. So um, it takes a lot less resources to do it as a group. Uh, our next step is to use the ellipse tool to create a circle there, which we're going to give uh, what we call an elliptical gradient. So rather than a linear gradient which goes in a straight line, the, ra uh, the radial gradient sort of spreads out from the center. We're going to start with our middle being uh, white, and we're going to give our last stop a yellow color. We're going to make a new stop. We're going to increase the opacity a little bit so it stands out a bit more and add another stop and make it a little bit more white in the middle. So again we've got this sort of area in the middle that's a little bit more white and then an even fall off after that. And um, he looks a bit big there so we might scale him down to allow our rays to stand out a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, and one last thing that we're going to do to our starburst here is add in uh, another uh, ellipse with a radial gradient and we're going to leave that one white and there we go so we have a sort of solid white area and then our rays come out of that and we're just going to select both of those ellipses we had and use the align and distribute uh, palette to sort of center them on each other again one more step that we're going to do to make it look a little bit nicer is we're going to add in some lens flare. So we're going to use the shape tool to create a six-sided polygon. And we're going to go to fill and stroke. We're going to give it a white outline. And we're going to give this a linear gradient that goes from transparent to white. Put the white end closest to the, uh, the setting sun. And uh, move the transparent area around there so that it looks nice. Okay, he's a little bit big where he is, so we'll, uh, we'll shrink him down. That looks nice. Go to the edit menu, copy, and paste in place, which puts it straight over the top of where it was copied from. Move him down a little bit, shrink him, and uh, paste another one. Move him down, shrink him some more. Gives us some really nice looking lens flare effect. Might shift that around so that they're actually in a straight line. There we go, that's our starburst layer complete. Oh, we'll actually blur those a little bit. Um, probably got a bit more than one. Yeah.